Hi there, so today I'm going to talk about Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a CSS framework, but what actually is a CSS framework? And why and how are they used in app development? Well, for those of you who don't know, a CSS framework is a collection of pre-built blocks of code that are designed to be reusable. These blocks of code can be used on the front end of your app. Remember, the front end of your app is the bit of your app that your users see. So the CSS framework will give you a collection of pre-coded elements that you can use directly within your app with really minimal effort. The idea is that by giving you a collection of pre-coded elements, this makes front-end app development much, much faster and easier than having to design and build everything from scratch. So Bootstrap is just one example of a really popular CSS framework. The company Twitter originally developed Bootstrap way before this guy took over. Twitter developed Bootstrap to help keep styling consistency across different websites and apps that they were building. However, since they initially developed Bootstrap, they have made it free and open source. So this means that you can see all of the source code for Bootstrap on GitHub, and you can use Bootstrap directly within your app development totally for free. If you go onto GitHub and you take a look at Bootstrap, you can see that Bootstrap has over 160,000 stars, which makes it one of the most popular open source projects on GitHub. So it's definitely something you want to consider to help speed up your next bit of app development. So what does Bootstrap and its massive library of pre-built components actually allow you to do? Well, one of the most important things that Bootstrap allows you to do is that as more and more people nowadays are using technology across multiple devices, all of which have different size screens, most websites and apps now need to be designed in a responsive way. Now, responsive might not be the best term to use here, because in my experience when building apps, when people start talking about being responsive, they start to think that the web app needs to be really, really fast. Like whenever a user clicks on a button, it needs to immediately do something. But actually in this context, this is not what responsive means. In this context, responsive just means that the front end of your app will need to respond to the different size devices that it is being viewed on. For example, if you're looking at the same website or app on mobile, tablet, or on desktop, it should have a different layout for each device. This is so that the website or app is able to best take advantage of the available size and space on the screen. Bootstrap makes this kind of behavior really, really easy, as we shall see shortly. Now, just like other CSS frameworks, the other really awesome thing about Bootstrap is that it comes with a massive collection of pre-styled elements that you can use directly in your app development with very, very minimal effort. So with all that being said, let me show you how Bootstrap actually works and how we can use it directly inside of Didify to build better looking websites and web apps even faster. So in previous lessons, we have seen how we can add HTML elements onto the page and then be able to update the styles and layouts of these elements by using this styles panel to generate custom CSS for our app. So let's say, for example, we want to add a new button to our page. Let's give this button a class, call it button, and now give a style to this button. So I'm going to give mine some rounded edges and I'm going to update its color to something slightly different. Now this kind of styling can get really time consuming. If we need to style every single element and every single little detail of the element just like this. Also, if you're anything like me, when it comes to styling things, I find it really, really hard to design things that actually look nice. So I want to show you how we can use Bootstrap to do all of our styling for us so that when you're developing your app, 
you don't actually even need to touch the styles panel over here at all. To do this, I'm going to show you exactly how Bootstrap works. So in order to do this, let's head over to the Bootstrap website, which is getbootstrap.com. And I want you to click on the Get Started button here. What you will find is this link, which is the link to the Bootstrap CDN. I want you to copy this link, just like I'm doing here, and then go back over to Didify, select the home page of your app, just like I am doing, expand the settings, and then scroll down to the import section. Finally, paste the Bootstrap CDN directly in here into the import section and click Save. So by adding this link, what this has done is that your Didify app can now reference the CSS classes that have already been developed by Bootstrap. Let's take a look at exactly what this means. Well, so over here, back in the Bootstrap documentation, if I scroll down, you can see that there is a long list of Bootstrap components that have been created by Bootstrap. Let's take a closer look at the button component here. Now, as you can see, the words class equals button, button primary are written here. What this means is that Bootstrap has a CSS class called button and one called button primary. And we can reference this class inside of our Didify app in order to use the Bootstrap styles that are associated with this class. There are other classes that you can see here also. For example, there is this button secondary class and this button success class. Each of these different classes bring with it different styles for the buttons. For example, the button primary class will produce a button that looks like this blue button here. The button secondary class will produce a button that looks like this gray button here. And the button success class will produce a button that will look like this green button here. Let's try adding some of these classes to the buttons inside of our Didify app. So back inside Didify, first of all, let's select this button element and remove the button class that we created initially for this button. Next, let's return to the Bootstrap documentation and see this first class here. This is called Button. We can copy this class name into Didify. Next, back inside the Bootstrap documentation, we can see the second class here is called Button Success. So now, if I apply this class inside of Didify, you can see that the styles of the button update on my app's canvas over here. Now, you will have noticed that I have not used the Styles panel inside of Didify to style this button at all. And all I have had to do is to write these three little words in this classes box here, button and button hyphen success. So with just these three little words, I have activated all of the bootstrap styles for my selected button element you can see that my button now has a hover state. It has rounded corners. It has got a green background. And so, as you can see, I get so many styles for doing so little. So this is really, really powerful. Now, we can do other things as well. For example, if I don't want to have a green button here, I can change the class name. For example, I can say button light. And as you can see, this is going to update the color of my button over here. Now, there are a whole bunch of other types of button styles. For example, button outline dark, which gives a dark outline around the button. And when I hover over it, it gets filled. I can also make the button bigger by typing in button large. Let's set the bootstrap class here back to button success. Right, now let's take a look at another bootstrap class. So let's head back over to the Bootstrap documentation and look for the navbar class. Now, as you can see, this navbar is the class over here and Bootstrap has already defined the position, the display, the padding and so on of this navbar. So let's see how we can implement this navbar inside of Didify. So here I'm going to add a new div block to my page 
and I'm going to put the button element over here inside of this div block. Now I'm going to give this div block some bootstrap classes. So the class that I'm going to give to this div block is the navbar class. Now you can see here that a little bit of padding has been added to this div block here. So this class here has applied the navbar bootstrap class, but we actually can't see the navbar at this point. So what we need to do is we need to apply another bootstrap class here, such as BG dark, which is going to turn the background of this navbar to dark. And now we can see that the button element that we placed inside the div block actually is now placed nicely inside of the navbar, which has got padding on either side of it. So with just these two words, we have created the navbar and we have given some style and it looks beautiful because of course, Bootstrap is doing all of the heavy lifting. You'll notice that we still haven't touched absolutely any of the styles here inside of the Didify styles panel. We've just used these two little words and these three little words for this button over here. So one of the great things about the Bootstrap styles is that they've already thought a lot about how the layout should behave. So for example, let's say that I wanted to add an image to my navbar, maybe a logo instead of having this button over here on the left. Well, all I have to do is come over to my Didify element tab and grab an image element. I can then drag and drop this image element onto my canvas before my button. And this image is going to have a source, which I'm going to set to the image logo for Didify. So I'm going to go over to Google and I'm going to search for Didify. And let's pick this image over here. And I'm going to copy and paste the source address from this image and then bring this back into the Didify platform over here. Okay, so now I'm gonna resize this image on the canvas like so. And you can see that now we have a really good looking navbar. We have our logo inside of the navbar and we have our button that has been laid out on the right hand side of our navbar. So this is just one example of the types of things that you can do with Bootstrap. In the follow-up lessons, I will show you how you can do a whole lot more and how you can update the styles of your Bootstrap elements so that the styles will propagate throughout your entire app. But for now, I want to show you one more thing. If you go back over to the Bootstrap website and you click on examples here, you can see a whole bunch of example Bootstrap projects. Now, you can actually download the source code for these projects here. So let's say, for example, I wanted to take this pricing page and use it somewhere in my website or my web app. What I can do is I can download the source code. Then once the source code is downloaded, I can navigate to the source code, unzip the source code and find the project that I want to use. So here I'm going to pick the pricing page. From here, I can open up the HTML file and then I can copy and paste this HTML directly into Didify under the HTML tab here. And now if I click update, you can see voila, I now have the pricing page directly inside of Didify. You can now start editing the code directly within the visual editor. You'll notice as well that this page is immediately responsive because it's using all of the bootstrap styles. Not all of the components for all of the designs that you'll find online will translate into Didify as smoothly as this. For example, graphs won't work quite this way, but even so, this can be a massive speed up for your app development. But instead of just taking templates like these or buying a template off a site like Envato Elements and then using them in your app development, in the rest of this course, I'm going to take you through Bootstrap and Didify step by step so that you can really understand what you're doing and so that you're in a strong position to not just copy other people's work, but so that you can actually create any design or any layout that you can possibly think of quickly and easily by fully understanding the Bootstrap framework.